Hey, welcome back again, boys and girls. Here we are looking at the, uh, the uh, motors today. <clears throat> We're gonna have a look at um, the front motor, which is an induction motor. It looks very, very similar to the, uh, the Tesla Model 3 induction motor. Um, we can see here that there's, uh, some people were asking questions about, uh, they see a little oil filter, what's it for? This is for the little, uh, it's not really a transmission, it's like more like a gearbox. And a gearbox would use oil, not, uh, not transmission fluid. So this is the little, this is a little uh, filter that, uh, that makes sure that the oil that's rushing around doesn't, uh, doesn't choke any of the little uh, components that are stuck inside the, uh, inside the, uh, the, the motor and the, um, and the uh, uh, gearbox. So this is, like I say, an induction motor. And we're gonna show you what that looks like in a few seconds when you tear it all apart. So let's move back here. Watch your head. And uh, this is called a PM motor, or sometimes called a permanent magnet motor. Um, a lot of people thought, ourselves included, that maybe this is a little bit more than just a PM motor. Um, there's a thing called a switch reluctance kind of motor, and uh, we're not sure, we don't really understand why it is that this has got some exotic, uh, some exotic additives to this, uh, this aluminum case, but uh, we'll, we'll try and sort that out later. And again, you see there's a little motor, uh, sorry, a little oil filter here. And by the way, that oil <coughs> is being looked at by lots of different um, lubrication companies. And they're saying that, you know, really and truly we should be looking at something brand spanking new. And if anybody's interested, I have some information on that and I, I, can, probably, uh, I can probably release that. But again, this looks very, very much, very, very similar, I should say, to the, uh, to the motor uh, that was on the Model 3. Um, <clears throat> if we look up here, we can see that, I think I mentioned this before, but this has got an offset uh, a transfer case. So we're looking at, so here's the motor. Some people are putting the motor in line with the, um, with the half shafts, but in this case, uh, they're not. And it's six of one, half a dozen of another, which way you want to go. Personally, this looks just as good to me as, uh, as what they have on a Jaguar, which is in line. Anyway, so now let's take a, a quick look at what everybody else doesn't get a chance to see, and that is the inside of these electric motors. So let's walk this way. <clears throat> oh, and for the guys that said, oh, maybe Sandy's coughing, and he's got uh, uh, the uh, COVID-19. I don't have anything except allergies. <clears throat> and if I talk too much, I, I start to cough or at least harumph. So let's walk over here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, just do a quick run through. Now this is where we train folks on, uh, on what's going on inside of electric motors. So let's start here at the end and we'll just take a quick brief look at uh, some of the motors that are, that are sitting here. So this is the latest motor that we've looked at. <clears throat> this is the Nissan Leaf and um, this has got some nice characteristics associated with it. Let me get a couple of parts here. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll just look at it from here. <coughs> the magnets are pretty strong. So um, you try not to get watches close to them. And uh, this is a very interesting configuration. We've never seen anything like it before. And uh, we sell these reports, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but when you put a piece of, uh, of uh, green cloth over the top, uh, it gives you a totally different flux look than we've ever seen before. So this is something really kind of interesting. Um, inside, many people don't know what's going on inside, but these are called laminates. And they, uh, they're made out of steel and they stick. They stick like, um, no, I can't use that expression, but they stick really well. Um, and, uh, and all of them nowadays are, are using either detents or glue. And in this case, if you can see right here, they're using little tiny, little tiny uh, detents. Actually, they got both detents and glue. So <clears throat> this is kind of the latest and greatest motor that's come out. Uh, 
This motor, uh, this is a PM motor, like I said before, permanent magnet motor. And then if we go over here, if we go over here, we're looking at the uh, e-tron. Now the e-tron is, um, is an induction motor and it looks entirely different inside. This, is, uh, this doesn't have magnets. Um, this has uh, uh, all of its uh, laminates inside um, are uh, kind of welded together. So let me just, holy moly, this is heavy. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's just look at what it looks like when you, <clears throat> I should have taken that off. Anyways, if you look inside here, you're seeing that uh, this is kind of, this is poured aluminum. Um, so you have the, uh, you have the laminate plates, which look like this. Okay, that's the laminate plates. And then in between, they pour aluminum, okay? And that's how, you, uh, that's how you're gonna get your, uh, your charge to, uh, to spin. This is called a rotor, and it spins inside this, which is called the stator. The other thing that maybe you might wanna know about is um, there's uh, two different kinds of ways to manufacture uh, the stator. One is like this, which is, uh, this is called, um, this is called uh, winding, and I'll show you another one in a little while uh, that's called uh, hairpin design. So, <clears throat> so anyway, you can see here that the Audi um, is using, uh, is using um, uh, an induction motor, and we have one of each kind of this, but the Tesla Model 3, uh, Model 3 induction motor doesn't look like that. So here we've got the Jaguar I-Pace. On this side, you've got the uh, gear train and the stator. You can see that uh, the the way that they put their magnets is vastly different. See, there's three of them in a row. So it's kind of, everybody has their own little secret sauce for the manufacture of how they want to do their, uh, their, uh, their electric motors. Over here is a Chevy Bolt, and I mentioned that, <clears throat> you know, we have two different ways to do, uh, to do the, uh, the, core, uh, the core wires or the, or the uh, copper wires. Um, so what you're looking at here is uh, the... Uh, is the uh, the Chevy Bolt or Chevy Volt uh, electric motor, and this is the Chevy Bolt electric motor. Both of them use hairpins. This one's got a very heavy hairpin. We never really quite understood that, but that was an older design. This one here is a newer design, and uh, I like the hairpin idea because it's easier to automate. Uh, again, you look at the um, you look at the magnets. Again, you're looking at everybody's got a different secret sauce. This one's really unusual because they have radius magnets. Those are super duper expensive. And over here's the Toyota Prius, the Prius um, and, the, um, and the BMW i3. <clears throat> and again, same, same sort of a deal. Everybody's got their secret sauce for how the uh, laminates are gonna look. Uh, here's some that are out, easier to get at. So again, you can see how the, uh, how the magnets were put in place. In this case, they've got four of them, different sizes uh, uh, inside, inside each one of the different laminates. Uh, let's just uh, talk about the Prius and then we'll talk about uh, the Model 3. So here we have the Toyota Prius. This is a much older kind of electric motor. Here's the, um, here's the magnets configuration. Here's the magnet configuration that you'd see in here. So um, I'm gonna put it right here. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of that. So let's, let's also, um, before we get into the motor, show you what, what happens when, uh, when we get this data. What do we do with it? So this is, um, <clears throat> this is kind of um, uh, the costed bill of material. And what we do is we're looking at here, we're looking at all the materials that we used. And then we do these little charts and whatnot to tell the people who are trying to uh, find out more about the Tesla, what materials are used and in what, in what uh, percentages. Throughout, this one's a cooling diagram. These cooling diagrams are telling you how does the, how does the AC or the, uh, or the radiator or the water, what, how does it work? And so this is telling you how everything kind of works inside of the, uh, in the Tesla Model 3. And so you can see it's cooled lines, gaseous lines. Remember when I was talking the other day about uh, air conditioning, the gas is, uh, is, uh, is uh, cool and the uh, liquid, the high pressure line is uh, solid, expansion valves, blah, 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 all this stuff here. This is, uh, this is kind of like uh, just a general mock-up picture of, uh, 
of what we thought was going to look like with the Model 3 and where they were going to put the electric motor because we saw there was mounting points already in the uh, Tesla 3 that we analyzed, which was one of the early ones. And then this is just uh, advertising. This is, um, <clears throat> this is uh, kind of looking at uh, the circuit board. So we actually analyze everything on the circuit board, everything, including some of the ICs. We can tell you how they work and whatnot. Then we do side-by-sides. Uh, in this case, it was the BMW, the Chevy Bolt, and the Model, Model 3. The battery management system was brand new to everybody. Everybody was interested in finding out how that worked. And uh, these are just some more of the circuit boards that we analyzed to, uh, to basically show how much things cost. And in essence, uh, tell some engineers how they work. Okay, let's go back here to the uh, Tesla Model 3 motors. So <clears throat> let's start on the induction side first. If you remember back there, you saw that the uh, Audi had uh, poured um, aluminum. Uh, they poured it over the top of the laminates. This is a little different. This is the Tesla Model 3 coppers. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, this. Now we talked about the Audi and the Audi was cast, but this one is machined. And uh, so you see from here uh, that uh, this used to go together like that. So these individual machine components are put together and then vacuum brazed. Now, whoops. Now let's look at the, um, the steel portion of this and see how this goes. So these, and I probably won't be able to make them go in, but they fit right inside, right inside the, uh, uh, the uh, sorry, the copper components. So this is a bit of a, juggling, I got too many of them, but anyway, just trust me, they slide down inside here and they fit right inside these little slots. So I'll have to take and fix that. So let's go over here. So how do we cool this thing? Well, these little seals act as, they do two things. One, you can see a little teeny tiny hole here. These are, um, these are uh, oil squirters. And what they do is their, uh, their job is to keep the motor cold. So when these slide on here, the other half of the uh, stator will slide over the top and, or the case will slide over the top and then that'll snap into place. And then these are fed from the inside and then cool to the outside. And quite frankly, this is how they do all of the uh, Tesla's uh, cooling systems are all pretty much the same as this. Let's move over here and we'll have a look at, um, look at what the inside of the stator looks like. So the stator is the stationary part and this one here, you can see the, uh, the windings. You can see how they go inside these little slots. Hang on. These little slots right here. And you can see that uh, Tesla has chosen to, uh, <clears throat> this is the PM motor, but Tesla has chosen the smaller wires and you can see how they are closely and densely packed, which is the big advantage over the, um, uh, over the uh, hairpin design. And then you can see the uh, bread roll, sometimes it's called, that sits on top. And this one here is from the bottom, but it sits on top looking like that. So let's look at the other magic parts that are associated with a Tesla PM motor. Uh, this is going to be a little hard to see. I'm going to just poke this over. So, hang on. I don't know if we can get this thing to be cooperative. But if we look right here, let me shed some light on it. So if we look right here, you can see that there, the magnet is in one piece. It's four, uh, four long uh, little pieces of magnet that are glued together. And these, um, <clears throat> these magnets um, have, a, a, these magnets have a, a, a directional um, characteristic. Now, initially we thought these magnets were, um, haul, had haulback effect. They don't, but um, they're not true haulback, but they still are, uh, are pretty interesting. They give off a little more juice than uh, flux than everybody else does. So this is kind of uh, a little synopsis. And again, you can see the oil squirters. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to see in detail or kind of detail, all the different uh, approaches that people are getting to these different motors and whatnot, um, you can see that everyone is trying to come up with the magic 
that'll give you the lowest cost, highest performance, best efficiency, and best utilization of each one of these different electric motors. Now, um, as you know, we, uh, we're, we're in a little bit of a crisis here with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the virus and everything. So we're trying to figure out new ways of making, uh, keeping the doors open. So let's step over here and we'll show you something that we think some folks might like. Um, we, uh, we have these tables, uh, stand-up tables, um, high tops, whatever, and, um, and we make them internally. We have uh, a bunch of different ones. Now what we're looking at is we're going to auction. Uh, we're going to auction two that will be coming from the uh, Tesla Model um, Tesla Model Y and two that'll be coming from the uh, Tesla Model Three. And uh, they'll come with uh, the high top. They'll come with uh, the tire, obviously. And then on top, you just put. <coughs> This is what we use for the ones we've got here already. Just put a, we'll put a piece of plastic glass in there and you can, uh, this will be a collector's piece. Um, I'll sign it and, uh, and it'll be to whomever is buying it. And I guarantee you, you'll be the only guy on your block with one of these in your man cave. Anyway, I just looking for, uh, I'm just looking for uh, suggestions back. Is this a good idea? Is it a little hokey? Let me know. Uh, Anyway, uh, tip your cashiers and, uh, and have a great, uh, a great day.